from the stables of the virtuous woman. This is Reverend Sylvia Nawa speaking to you on the subject, the danger of looking back. The danger of looking back. I'm reading from the book of Genesis chapter 19 verses 17 to 26. Chapter 19 verses 17 to 26. And the Bible reads, as soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, flee for your lives. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere. Don't look back and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. But the Lord, but Lord said to them, no, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, here's a town near enough to run to. And it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to them, very well, I'll grant this request too. I'll not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly because I cannot do anything until you reach it. That's why the town was called Zohar. By the time Lot reached Zohar, the sun had risen over the land. Then the Lord rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain, including all those living in the cities and also the vegetation in the land. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Matthew 5, uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. And when you go to Luke uh, chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus replied, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. The danger of looking back. No one who puts a, a, a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the service of the, in the kingdom of God. That is what Jesus says. That's what the Lord Jesus said. Why is that? Because when you look back, you are going to lose your saltiness. When you have put your hand to the plow and you look back, you are going to lose your saltiness. Putting your hand to the plow means you entering into the service of God. When you put your hand to the plow, because you see, when your hand is on the plow, you are plowing through into the word of God. You are getting uh, matured. You are growing spiritually. You are growing in wisdom. You are growing in the intelligence. You are growing spiritually. And so you have put your hand to the plow and you are getting in it. You are being prepared for the services of God, for the work of God in the church. So you are also getting involved. You are into the Bible studies. You are into prayer meetings. You are into praying. You are into witnessing. You are into evangelizing. You have put your hand to the plow. That's what it means. Now, when you have gone through all that process, first of all, you were born again. You have accepted the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And then now you have prepared yourself. And then suddenly, because it becomes hard, because at some point, it will be hard. At some point, it may be difficult. At some point, you may be thinking and feeling, God is not hearing me. And then you look back. And then you decide to look back. Now, while your hand is on the plow, it means you are still in the kingdom of God. And you are still doing the work that you are supposed to be doing. Witnessing, evangelizing. You are in the word. You are praying. When you start thinking back, you start thinking back. You see what happened to the children of Israel when they were now in the wilderness. Moses, they started murmuring against Moses and, and, and Aaron. And now they were remembering. What were they remembering? They were remembering the cucumbers. They were remembering the meat. They were remembering the garlics. Which means they were remembering the brides they used to have in Egypt and the good times. And when you start slowing down also and you start entertaining thoughts like that, what happens is your plow now, first of all, you will start moving slowly. 
moving slowly means sometimes you read the word, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you pray, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you go to church, sometimes you don't. You are beginning to slow down. While you are slowing down, you know what is happening with you? You are now, the plow is slowing down. At some point, you are going to, to stop completely. You are going to stop completely. Because you cannot look back while you are still moving. Otherwise, you will fall. But you will stop completely. And when you stop, then you look back. Then you lose your saltiness. Because what is saltiness? What is to saltiness? Saltiness is you still having the ability to pray. That is being salty. Still being able to evangelize. That is being salty. Still being able to minister to your friends, to minister to your families, to minister to people on the street, in the markets. That is you still being salty. To be able to attend prayer meetings, to be able to go to church regularly, to be involved in the works of God. That is being salty. Immediately you start slowing down, the saltiness also st starts to leave you. The saltiness also starts to leave you. Now, after you have taken time to do all this that you have done in order for you to enter the service of God, then you look back after you have enjoyed the goodness of the Lord, after you have felt how, how, how nice it is for God to answer your prayer. And then you look back. That is dangerous because then you, you lose the, 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 your saltiness. Rather, what you do is flee. The Bible says flee. When the Bible is talking about fleeing, it means just that, just run. When you start entertaining those ideas, when you start thinking of the good old days as they call them in the world, just know that you are trading on dangerous ground. Just get flee, run, get back into the closet. Get back into the closet. Go and pray. Go and worship. Go and praise the Lord. Because when you look back, what is it that you are thinking? What is it that you are imagining? Are you like Israelites who said, the, who were thinking of cucumbers? Who were thinking of, of, of the garlics? Thinking of the good old days, the worldly days, the days that you said no to, the days that you said from today onwards. So when you are committing to the Lord, you are saying from today onwards, Lord, I am done. I am done with the world desires and I choose to follow you. The danger of looking back is that you lose your saltiness. Rather, guard against it. That, the Bible tells us you, you, you guard your salvation with fear and trembling. That is the only way you'll be able to maintain your saltiness. That is the only way you'll be able to increase to your saltiness. Guarding your salvation with fear and trembling. When you don't, Believe me, when you don't, Matthew 5, 13 verse 22 is talking about the parable of the sower. Now he's talking about the man, the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns, is the man who hears the word. But the worries of this world, the worries of life, and the deceitfulness of wealth, you know what that does? It chokes, it chokes it, making it unfruitful. Meaning, you have received the word, that is you now, and you have been walking accordingly. But then the worries start coming in. How do the worries come in? The worries come, start coming in because of the problems, because of the difficulties, because at some point you start thinking God is not hearing you. Or at some point you, you are just, at some point you, you are, uh, you know, like deceived, you know. But then all that is because you have slowed down. All that is because you have slowed down, because it just doesn't happen. When you slow down, all those things, the worries start coming in. There's a problem here, there's a problem here. Just, just look to God. Just focus. Your focus must be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he says he is our Jehovah Jireh. He is the one who provides everything. Or is it sickness? He is the one. He is the healer, the ultimate healer. Is it troubles? He is our advocate. He is all sufficient. You see, when you have the word of God, you are able to repel all those arrows of the enemy that will keep hitting you, trying to take you off the track. So now the Bible is telling us that if you are, you are those worries and the deceitfulness of wealth, because you see, when you have been lacking, being in lack for a long time, I've been there. You are in luck for a long time when you have been somebody who was able to provide for yourself. But then now you have crossed from there and you are into the kingdom of God. And there comes a time when that has, had, has to happen to you because God is processing you, taking you from zero. Remember that he is cleaning you out and making you a new creation. A new creation does not come with the old baggage. 
No, the old baggage has to stay back. The old baggage has to, re to remain. And when God is cleaning out that old ba baggage, you will find yourself in situations where you lack. I, ha I have been there, so I know what I'm talking about. You will find yourself, but when you find yourself there, hold on to the word of God. Hold on to Jesus because he is the ultimate everything. He is Lord. He is Savior. He's the provider. He's the healer. He's our advocate. He's self-sufficient. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. He is just what he, all that he says he is. Otherwise, the worries will choke the word that is in you. The worries of this world, the deceitfulness of this world, of the worries of this world, will choke the word that you have, that is in you. And once the word is choked, once the word is choked, you start looking back. Once the word is choked, you start slowing down on that plow of yours. Once the word is choked, you start losing your saltiness. You start losing yourself. The danger to that is that you die spiritually. The danger to that is that if you continue in that way, you continue in that manner, you will die spiritually. And when you die spiritually, you will die physically. Physical death, spiritual death, you are headed straight to hell where you did not want to go. When you look at the children of Israel again, they died spiritually because they looked back. What happened to them? They died in the desert. They died in the desert. They never entered the promised land. They never entered the promised land. The danger of looking back is that you lose your saltiness, is that you die spiritually. You start looking, longing for those old things. Lot's wife turned into salt. Despite the angel having told them, run, don't look back, just run. Lot's wife did what? I'm sure she was the last one in the line. She started slowing down, so she became the last one in the line. In being the last one in the line, she actually stopped and she looked back. The deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of the enemy will make you turn back and you turn into a pillar of salt. You turn into a pillar of salt, you die spiritually, you lose your saltiness. And when you die in the physical and you have died spiritually, then that, that's it. That's the end of you. Therefore, what, you, what, what do you do? No matter how hard it is, no matter how difficult the situations, no matter how much you feel this is not working, because you will reach that point. But remember, when you reach that point, remember that Jesus is Lord. Remember all the time that Jesus is Lord. Choose rather to renew your mind. Choose to stay in the word. Choose to stay in prayer. Choose to just lie down there and, and just worship and just, and just give praises to God. Romans 12. This is one and two. This one says, offer your bodies. We offer our bodies as living sacrifices. Sacrifices that are holy and pleasing unto the Lord. Sacrifices that are holy and pleasing unto the Lord. That we should not conform anymore to the old pattern, the pattern of the world, but rather we should conform to the pattern of the kingdom of God. Renewing our minds so that we preserve our saltiness. We position ourselves in such a way that our bodies spiritually are, sac are for sacrifice. It's an act of worship. We maintain our saltiness by continuing to, 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 to renew our minds, by continuing to be in prayer, to be in the word of God. We continue to witness. We continue to evangelize. We continue to, 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 to minister the word, to preach, to preach to the lost souls so that we bring them back into the, the, the kingdom. We continue in the service of God just by focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus is Lord Danger of looking back is we lose our saltiness. Danger of looking back is we, we die spiritually. Danger of looking back is that we lose it all. Stay in the word. Stay in prayer. Evangelize. Don't look back so that you don't die spiritually. Don't look back so that you become, your body becomes a, 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 a sacrifice. A sacrifice holy and pleasing to God. Until next time, like me on Facebook and follow me on YouTube. Bye-bye and shalom.